This week on Nintendo Main, I finally beat Breath of the Wild. So we're going to do some spoiler cast in for the second half of the show. And I locked things on top of each other to make bigger games. Oh, yes. Welcome to Nintendo Main, episode 81. Nine squared. Wow. We, we did so many episodes. 81. Plus or minus nine squared, actually. Yeah. That's a tall number. That's a large number. If it was, uh, once we get to uh, nine times nine times nine, then we can do our 999 episode for uh, <laughs> for the, DD- for the DS one. game. So I was like, we could do nine nine, but there's three nines. So if we're still alive in episode whatever it is, 300 something, we could do it then. Uh, I, think, I think our next cube will be uh, 125. Yeah. <laughs> and we are your hosts. I'm Trey. I beat some games this week, Johnson. And I'm Jeremy, a major test of strength, Mikowski. A major test of strength? That's me. What is your test of strength? Pretty major. Yeah. <laughs> I thought you were going to say Jeremy Sega fan, Mikowski. Well, I already made a Sega reference at the top of the show. Because you are a Sega fan now. We can jump I've right become into, a Sega fan. We can just jump right into bought games that we got. And so, it, I, uh, yeah, I had the f- good fortune of... Uh, a coworker, well, specifically a coworker's boyfriend who was wanting to unload some classic Sega Genesis stuff and uh, managed to get a pretty good deal on uh, a console of the uh, first model. And uh, I got seven games, and some of them are pretty good. The best one I got was probably Fantasy Star 4. Yeah, I think uh, mm-hmm. I was just going to say, how many of those games are not on Virtual Console? Because I think most of them are. Oh, they probably all are. Are on Nintendo systems in some way. I know Fantasy Star, all those are were available on Wii. Virtual console. I just wanted to expand my collection, and uh, quite frankly, I want to record some Sega stuff, so now I'll be able to. Oh no, I'm not. I'm not judging you for buying those games. I'm just saying. I'm just saying that a lot of them are available on Nintendo. Oh yeah, all the I'm best. Just, I'm just justifying the Sega talk. I know, just, <laughs> just justifying our Sega talk on a Nintendo-based podcast. Oh right, that we do exactly. <laughs> yeah. You know, I'm saying I think everything you have is available on Nintendo aside from Aladdin. I think that's the only one. That's yep. not that you can't get it on NES or on any sort of. Even though you can, you can get a version of it on NES or Game Boy. So ah, <laughs> there it is. So I said that last weekend. But yeah, so I got a uh, Sonic Two and Sonic Three, Toe Jam and Earl Two, Panic on Funkotron. That game's kind of weird. Of course, Fantasy Star Four, Gunstar Heroes, and Sonic and Knuckles. Nice. And you and, got? Uh, I've since purchased. Well, I purchased Aladdin last week. Got a pretty good deal on that. I think I actually mentioned it on the podcast. Then I also bought a uh, Streets of Rage two, uh, the first Sonic and uh, Doctor Robotnik's Mean Mean Bean Machine. Yeah, that game's difficult. Which is yeah, it's Puyo Puyo. Yeah, I was gonna say if you don't know, uh, Mean Bean Machine is Puyo Puyo Pop. I also ordered that game right after I saw that you got it because I was like, oh, I wonder how much that is. I think I got it for like I don't know six bucks, seven bucks, something like that. Yeah, it's cheap. But uh, I, but then later I found out that I already had it because it's on the Sonic Mega Collection that I have for GameCube. So I tried doing a, vi- a video record thing last night, and I didn't do very well on it. It's it's a hard game. Like it's a, I'm not that good at Puyo Pop. Like I kind of just like throw everything down and hope that I get some sort of like combo from that. But yeah, in that one I just was not getting any sort of combos. So I was getting killed on that second guy. So I probably won't post any of it. But. Yeah, I realized that I'm really bad at it. I thought it was okay because I could kind of play the Tetris Puyo game. But, yeah, no, I'm not good at the old school one, unfortunately. Because the game looks great for what it is, and it's fun. I just I can't do that whole uh, predicting the future combo thing that Puyo pops all based around, so it's difficult to play for me. Yeah, I think it's like any other puzzle game. You have to play the shit out of it, and it becomes like muscle memory to play the game. Yeah, it's really hard though. I mean, because you have until to, you get to that point, like puzzle games aren't really enjoyable. They have to like yeah. kind of click. I think that Puyo Pop is a hard, is a harder puzzle game than most puzzle games, though, so, because you have to do all that forward thinking, get a future proof yourself there, keep thinking about yeah. future combos. It's hard to do. It takes a while. Well, a good thing to do is to set the uh, computer opponent to like the highest difficulty level and then just watch what they do. Oh yeah, well because they throw stuff really down, down really quickly too. Which is how I learned how to play Tetris Attack actually on uh, the SNES. I think I mentioned that before. Oh I yeah. Just put a, I put I did a two player match where both were computer 
opponents set to, to the highest difficulty level, and then I just watched how they competed with each other. Well, uh, Tetris Attack also had a how-to mode, though, where you could go through and it would tell you how to do everything, and there were advanced hints in there as well. So that helped me out a lot when, when oh, that that's was on true. there. Yeah, the Sega, everything about the Sega really feels kind of more archaic. And I've played a little bit of Aladdin, and uh, I want to say, so far, uh, the, the verdict's still out that I think uh, the Super Nintendo version's better. Yeah. But the, uh, the animation is definitely better. I will give it that. The levels are longer. I'll say that, too. It seems like the levels are kind of stretched out. Yeah, they're longer, and they're different, too. Like, the game plays completely different. Like, uh, I mean, this one's, like, more like a Mario game, like the Super Nintendo one is. Yeah. You know, because you can combo, jump from one guy to another. I actually played through the Super Nintendo game. I got it last week, and I played through all of it, like, a couple days ago. And, uh, yeah, I mean, it's it, it feels completely different. Like, I don't really know. I don't think it's better, necessarily. But it's, it I plays differently. I think it feels, like, more polished, but... Maybe more just because it's so streamlined. Yeah. Because, because and it's way easier, I think. I think it's much it's easier than the other one. Yeah, and the and the levels are very short, I'll give you that. And you can beat the game, I mean, you can beat the game in an hour. You can beat it in less if you're better at it, you know. It's, I mean, I could see people speed running that probably in uh, 20 minutes, maybe. I don't know. I got to the uh, Cave of Wonders in the Sega version before I gave up. Like, I didn't. Did you get to the. Lives. I was going to say, did you get to the magma or the part with the lava? I don't that, think so. That I was just the got worst. to. I did ride the carpet one time, but it was just kind of like from one little area to the next. Oh yeah, yeah. I didn't get to the actual carpet part, which that was the part I really wanted to get to. But the yeah, the, the part where you get into like the where it's like you're, it looks like you're in, in a volcano and there's like lava everywhere. I hated that level because it, it's because the jumps are weird. Like you got to jump, you got to walk all the way to the end of the edge before you jump. Yeah. And most of those. And it's it's really easy to die, you know, because you fall in and you're just dead. At least in the Super Nintendo one, you fall in the lava and you lose a heart and then you come back out and you can get another chance, you know. I mean, the which jumping is rare, wonky in which the is really rare. SNES version for sure, but the, yeah. I feel it's even more so in the Sega version. It feels really loose. It's like you kind of said, it feels kind of like Earthworm Jam or like Prince of Persia yeah. well, or something I, like that. The Super Nintendo is more Prince of Persia. Because yeah, because of you like can grab edges and stuff. Yeah, you can grab edges, and it's about like acrobatics and jumping from one thing to another and all that. And I don't. I'm, I'm sure you know you can find the sail on every level, right? In the Super Nintendo. Right, I figured that at the very end of the game. Okay, because I think in your video you said that you found it, that it was only in that last level, but it's in it's in the whole game. No, so. I was like in the video you see that I'm like, and that's why I keep showing a picture of the sail that I'm like finally realizing <laughs> that the yeah. sail was in every level and I had to. Grab oh it. sure. Yeah, it, that sale is really good to have. It helps a lot. It helps a lot, yeah, yeah. <laughs> especially on yeah, the uh, sure. platforming parts. So uh, for other stuff I bought, I bought this game called Metopia that came out last week, in case you've heard of that. Big Nintendo release. I ended up not getting uh, Hey Pikmin, but I did get Metopia. So I got to play, and you get to play on from where you got to on the demo. So I just started at that, at the King's Castle, which is cool. And then you go in, and there's a royal family that you get to add your own Mies to, so... I basically made it like the princess is Princess Peach, and the king is uh, Toadsworth, and the princess has like a guy that she's supposed to get married to, and a guy that she likes. So like Bowser's the guy that she likes, and Mario's the guy that she's like supposed to get married to that she doesn't like. So I have like a love triangle thing going on between Mario, Bowser, and Peach. I have it backwards, but it's it's still fun to play. Uh, Jess got it too. We both we both got the game separately because she wanted because we wanted to have it digitally which is like a first for our relationship, but it's pretty cool. She's been playing a lot. She found out that you can actually, you can do like you did in Xenoblade, where like you can get new equipment, but have your guys look the same as they did before. Like if you don't like the way their outfits look, you can have like set to one outfit. I don't, I don't know, know if you, I don't know if you ever did that on Xenoblade X. No, I didn't. Where you could like put on new armor, but you could have them not look like they're wearing armor. Like that type of thing. And there's a lot of games that do that. I know like a, like DC Universe Online did that too, where like you could like set it as a certain look. Like, if you didn't want your guy to change every time they got new armor. But. That's funny. It's like a step backwards, but it makes sense, too. No, I mean, you can do both. You can do it both ways. Like, you can have it where you see the armor when they put it on. But you can also, if you don't like the armor, but you like the stats, you can keep it as the old armor that you like better and still get the stats. You know, it, it makes sense, I guess, if it's a... It does. From an aesthetic point of view. I think that all the outfits look really silly, so I like, I like seeing them. So, I, 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 didn't, I didn't even look to find that because... I didn't even think about it because I was I liked the way they looked. But yeah, it's fun. It's a it's charming. It's such a weird like me thing that's so late in the game, you know. But it's funny, you know. You basically put your own guys in there, and it's 
is pretty much how much humor you get out of Mies. Yeah, who cares about Mies anymore? I don't know. I still think it's funny. <laughs> but, you know, since it's an RPG, I, I like, you know, I like playing those. So I played around with it a bit. But, but it's uh, funny to see, like, your friends in weird situations. Yeah, you're in there, so you get to do weird stuff. <laughs> oh, yeah. joy. No, I mean, it's funny. And I've, and I've put, like, you know, you can scan QR codes, so I've just been pulling up, like, like I didn't make the Toadsworth me. I found that one online and just added it on there. I didn't make the Bowser one either. But it's like, who would I have this first? So I could just scan it and put it in there. But, yeah, I'm still getting enjoyment out of it. I hear it's fairly long, so I don't know how many hours I put into it. But So it's a linear game and just has, like, every character is kind of generic so that they can you can put whoever in there. Yeah, I mean, they kind of, like, do their own thing and you just add a face to them. So it makes it, I guess it's kind of the funniness goes to, like, whoever you put in there. But the random ones, but all the but all the towns are filled with random me's that it just kind of randomly selects off the internet. So like I said before, that's that's funny. Like there'll be like Adele will be in a town, you know, and like or like Al Capone is like the guy and is one of the towns too, you know, like stuff like that. There's a, there's a bunch of weird weird faces in there. But it's like a it's like the Metopia or a, it's like the Tamodachi life was, except with an actual story, and you know. You can actually go and level up your characters and all that. And it kind of has like a social links, kind of like Persona, where like depending on how you stick your characters in the in the hotel rooms, whenever you get to a hotel, you can uh, you can raise their like friendship level and all that. And the higher level, the higher level you get, the more moves you get and the more you like help each other out while you're fighting. So I've been trying to keep everybody around the same level, like keep all their levels as high. So I think I'm up to like seven level or seven or eight with all the characters. And they do, you know, they get new moves every time you go to a higher level but they also get like jealous of each other and all that so there's you know all sorts of funny stuff in there so what's your role in the like you're the main character i'm the main are you controlling everything are you like uh are you just the leader of the party and then you control everybody's like equipment and stuff from there uh well like the way the game works like you basically you control only yourself in the battles you're like you, you can only decide like your own character like whether you're gonna attack or use magic or whatever you can only do that for that one character all the other characters will kind of do it on their own but there's like an overhead map like mario world style you know where you go from like one level to another and once you get to that level there's different paths you can take that have different things and different paths and as you go through and if you go to all the paths there's like a flag that shows up on the level you know so you want to go back and complete it and you can find extra treasures and stuff like that but you basically uh when you go to hotels like your mees will like ask for money to buy stuff so you can give them money to buy equipment so you don't actually buy the equipment. You give them money and they go and do it. But sometimes they'll actually not buy the equipment. They'll go buy something else, which is oh, kind so of funny. Know if they're going to spend the money on. Yeah, you like give them money to buy like a sword or something, and they'll come back with candy. And then it'll be like, oh, I decided to get candy instead. So it's like, oh crap. So now you got to wait till the next hotel to get them to go get a sword or or outfit or whatever. So so the me's kind of think on their own, which is funny. I and mean, that's part of the whole nature of it. It's just kind of like, let's put a bunch of characters in here that you like and just see how they interact with each other, and it's funny, you know. It's very, Like I said, it's very much like Tomodachi Life, except there's like a story in it, and you can actually go to places instead of just being stuck in the apartment building the whole time. So I, I liked it. I liked that it has more area to go on it. And it's like a traditional RPG. Yeah, it's all turn-based. Yeah. It's turn-based, but you only select what the main character does. Like, you can only choose what they do. Everybody else just does their own thing. They all think for themselves. So that's basically how it works. And there's, like, big bosses and stuff. And, and the idea is you want to go collect all the faces of everybody. So you'll have to go search. It's like, you, like, it opens up with you going to a town and everybody's faces get taken away from that town. So you have to search for their faces, like, by taking different routes and all that to find them. That's pretty much how it works. Sounds like some Game of Thrones shit. Yeah, <laughs> kind of. Except uh, they didn't lose any faces yet. Well, I don't know. Maybe those one guys who are the kings of masks or whatever the fuck they're called. Kings of Liam. Yes, but yeah, that's what that's what I've been playing. I actually beat. Well, I said I said I beat Aladdin, and you know, at the top of the show, I said I beat Zelda also. But we'll save all of our spoiler stuff for our second half of the show. But I've also I've almost beat Dragon Quest V. I started playing wow. that again while I was playing Metopia. So I only have like. I don't know. I don't have much left. I think I, there's only like two big bosses that I have to beat. So I'm getting close to being done with that game. So that's cool. I've been kind of like playing that little bits whenever whenever I can, you know. I'll like stop playing it for a bit and then I'll come back to it. But I'm excited to beat it so I can get back into Dragon Quest VIII because that game looks really good. And I want to play it again on the on 3DS. So I'm getting excited to give it get back into that. And of course I'll, div, I'll give you somewhat of a let you know what I thought of it 
once I get through it of uh, Dragon Quest V, which I've liked. I've liked it a lot. It's a Super Nintendo. That was one. on DS. Yeah, that's on DS, but that was the Super Nintendo, the first Super Nintendo one that didn't get released here. You you have it. You got it for like three dollars from the Japanese. gaming classic. Yeah, so it's uh, those those games are pretty difficult in that way. But uh, in a news thing to segue to that, uh, Yuji Hori did a video thing on Twitter saying that Dragon Quest Eleven will come out in America, which isn't that big of a surprise, but still he did a little video where he's surrounded by a bunch of plush slimes and all that, and says that they're working. It's coming. Working as hard as they can to translate it, and then it's going to take a long time because there's a lot of text in it, which is to be understood. But at least he addressed the fans about it because that's out in Japan now. I was actually looking at a uh, Play Asia to see how I think they're selling the 3DS one for like fifty five dollars import, which is kind of pricey. Is that the one where it's like um, you're seeing two different versions of the yeah. graphics at once? Yeah, where it's like the sprite one on the bottom and the 3D one on the top. The I also heard that the original Dragon Quest is in there. Is it? That's what I heard from is the internet. I mean, is the game in there, or can you just go to Aleph Guard? Because they've done that before, where the whole map is in the game. Like, Dragon Quest 2 II and 3 do that, like, where all of the original game is pretty much in there, like, map-wise. Like, you can walk around where you were in the first game. Not sure. Yeah. It just so. I just saw that Dragon Quest was supposedly an extra. Oh. The original Dragon Well, that's cool. I wonder which version it is. Like, I would think maybe the... The PSP version. It is? I don't know. I <laughs> Was there a PS3 version? I don't know. So I thought it was the only release. Well, the Dawn of Souls or whatever. Or wait, no, I'm thinking Final. That's Fantasy Final Fantasy. Fantasy. That's Final Fantasy one. No, but uh, there was a. I mean, in Japan, there was a there was a re-release. There was a Super Nintendo game that had Dragon Quest one and five on it, and a Super Nintendo game re-release of three, and all those were ported to Game Boy for America. There were the ones that came out in America were the ones were ports of the Super Nintendo version of of Dragon Quest one and two and three. So maybe they would do that version because i heard that cell phone versions kind of suck so hopefully they don't use that like the new sprite art and all that for the ios version but that makes it any, even more interesting but i thought about buying it just to play it in japanese and see how far i can get but 55 bucks is a little high for that and they're selling the ps4 one for like 90 so it's like yikes that's some high import price there yeah but if you want to play it, you got to pay the price. Yeah. Well, I, I'll wait for it. Maybe by the time it comes out, I'll I'll made it through all of the other ones. <laughs> Maybe I'll have a beat. Because all I really have left is, uh, well, I'm almost done with five, but then all I have is uh, eight, nine, and six left. I mean, that's still a lot. But <laughs> but I'm like, it's like the halfway point, I guess, the five is. Well, I guess seven was because I played the one, two, three, four, and seven. So, yeah. But, yeah, I'll let you know more about that once I get through it. Um, after we after we recorded last week, we did some Splatoon stuff. So we actually can tell you stuff about the voice chat and how it works. Because we didn't yeah, really, we, we didn't we really know last time. Use it. So we actually used it. And so basically the way it works is you can uh, you can start a room in the uh, regular – I forget what they call it. Like the, reg- the area, the room that you go to where you can start like local matches. Or no, that's it's like not the it. lounge. I think no, not the lounge. It, when you go when you go into the regular online mode, where you would do like a regular turf battle or whatever, down at the bottom you can start a room there. You can start a lounge, as they call it, and you can invite your friends in. And you know, once you get into lounge, you can talk through the app, like through whatever. I used to my Bluetooth headset for it. But the weird thing is, is you can't actually play any of the turf war stuff with it while you're in the room. And if you guys want to, if you want to play anything, it'll automatically just play with whoever's in there. So we played one-on-one Splatoon. It was so weird. <laughs> I didn't it was. know. I didn't know you could do that. And you can't talk to each other when you're against each other. Yeah. What the fuck, man? <laughs> so that so that went away. So when we got, you know, everything was working fine with the voice chat. Then we, when we went into like a battle and we were on different teams, we couldn't talk to each other anymore. Yeah, it was so weird. And it was like you couldn't even be like, aha, I got you or anything like that. Like it's so strange. And what sucks is you can't like – you can't just talk to each other and go like play like a regular ranked battle or like or like Turf War or something like that against the computer. It's so weird. Yeah. Like why can't you just like do that? <laughs> like I don't I don't understand. And we tried to – like we, we exited out of it. And it kind of let us talk a little bit after we were out of the lounge until, like, the level started and then it just cut off. But it was like... Yeah, it's, it let us talk for a few seconds and then it cut off. Like, yeah. It was pretty abrupt. It seems like a missed opportunity. Like, they should let you just do... I mean, I don't know. Maybe it's too much, but party chat, man. Like, can we? Can you can just talk to each other no matter what you're playing. Yeah. It but should you, just be a Nintendo app. Yeah. That's for any... No matter what you're doing on the Switch, you can talk to each other through. Yeah. Well, 
Or you could just use your phone, I guess. <laughs> but That's I did. That's true, but I mean, for multiple like people at once. Yeah. Sure, you could use something like Discord or uh, yeah. even Skype. Sure. Yeah. But we did. Uh, we did do the salmon run, which is which makes a little bit more sense. That one's a little bit cooler. On salmon run, you can start a lounge as well. But you can just like join up with however many friends and then you just hit a button and they automatically put people online that you don't know on there to fill out your team. And then you play Salmon mm-hmm. Run like you normally would, but you can talk to each other. And that was cool. Like that actually works a lot better. But the other one doesn't make any sense because, yeah, you get eight people in there and you can all play each other. But you don't get – you don't gain any levels or anything like that. You can't play in the main, you know, Turf War or Splatfest or anything like that. So it's kind of like – seems like a major missed opportunity. And, uh Yeah. It's too bad we didn't – I thought about, like, trying to record last week and after that just so we let you know. But now you know if you haven't actually tried to voice chat on there. But we actually did the we did the salmon run, and I talked to a guy that I hadn't talked to for a long time on there that I just kind of randomly invited to come to the room, and he showed up. So. And that person's now my friend on Switch. Yeah. So, uh, so Hunter, you know, if you listen to this, thanks for uh, getting on there for the salmon run with thanks, us. Thanks, Hunter. And, and playing. That was cool. Thanks for hunting some salmon with us. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, so. I will say the the salmon runs the one that was the smoothest of all the matches we did. Yeah. Um, speaking of smooth, though, uh, I have gotten better at Splatoon. I had a very bad record last week when I told my record, but it's improved. Where's it uh, at now? Well, it's still not great, but I'm at twenty six <laughs> wins, twenty four losses. Twenty six wins, twenty four losses. Yeah, I'm getting closer to like being a mediocre player. I mean, that's, but I, yeah. I am very commonly get the most points on my team. Are like you still not? Are you still using motion controls? No, I stopped using motion controls, and I and I got better, and I was kind of pissed about it because I really hoped that the motion controls were like the the right thing to do. Yeah, no, I was right. Like, I oh, well, I'm twenty five, twenty five, but I was right when I said that you can't use the stick up and down when you have motion control on because I tried it again just to yep. double just to double check, and yeah, it doesn't. Now, if it if it would have used if they would do it the way that you said that it would or that you thought it was, then that would make more sense. Right, where you know, we can like move it fine tune. Yeah, you can fine tune it. I'm game. fine with that. I like doing that on Zelda or like, you know, like the Zelda the 3DS Zelda games did it and the Wii U Zelda games did too. I really like that, but just completely taking away the analog completely, I mean just up and down and you have to do this, it just doesn't work for me, you know. And I understand that if you got good at it, you could be really fast, but I pretty much had to go in and uh I had to mess with the sensitivity and I had to invert the Y axis. Yeah. I had to do a few things before it felt comfortable. Sure. But once I did, I was like, okay, this is better. I like this better. And like, I actually was like splatting people. I'd feel like I thought I was shooting them, but I guess I wasn't aiming at them correctly. (laughs) Now I'm actually like splatting people when I'm shooting at them. Yeah. So So that's good. So you found out that you can actually splat them pretty easy on the, uh, if you have the arrow spray, you can take them out pretty quickly. Oh yeah. The arrow spray is fantastic. I've bought all the other weapons up to, I think I'm on level 13 now. Oh, you're higher than me. I'm only 11. So, I'm either I, 12 or 13. But I kind of I kind of took a break. I haven't been playing as much. I've been trying to do Salmon Run stuff, and I just, man, I suck at that game. But I really like that game. I just wish I was better at it, you know. It's hard. It's just a bo- like a boss rush. Yeah. Slash horde mode. Yeah, it is just like a boss rush thing, but the level changes as you go, which is cool. There was one I played where it was like fog everywhere, and you couldn't really see anything. And, like, the sometimes the, the latter half, like, it'll get bigger or smaller and all that, and... It's cool. I mean, I'd like to, I don't know, I have yet to get anything from playing it, so, like, for the regular mode, so I'd like to at least get that far. Like, I went up one level in pay grade, but then I went back down after I'd lost two times. It's crazy, because I've been playing, like, I'll play one, and we do, like, so good, where we get, like, over 50% every time, like, extra, and then that last level, we just die. <laughs> and then you get nothing, you know? It's like, what? It sucks. But, yeah, I'm yeah, glad. Yeah, you have to depend a lot on how good your uh, the people playing with you are. For sure. Oh, yeah, I'm glad you're still playing it. So. Oh yeah, and I'm not like obsessively playing it, but I'd say I play it an hour a day just to grind. I like the fact that you can grind and gain levels. Oh yeah. And uh, it's fun too to just like I've just been getting better and like, for instance, like my sub weapon, I wasn't doing a good job of using it when I talked to you last week, and now I've got it like a science to like how I. Oh, so you figured out? Because I'm also yeah. learning how the levels work. So yeah, so like, yeah. I know the level, I know which path I'm going to take. Yeah, cover it in paint. Get my gauge up to sh- to throw the bombs. Yeah, and you figured out you figured out how to do the jetpack and all that. Like depending. Yeah, I actually kind of hate, hate that. The jetpack. <laughs> yeah, it it's with one of the splat dualies. Yeah, as the jetpack, and I don't like it. You don't you don't like the splat dually? You don't like the jetpack? 
I don't really like either. I mean, yeah. I like the Splat Dooley okay, I guess. Um, I've also only played a few of the ranked matches, like so. I've only mostly played Turf War. I played some of the uh, the one where you're on the floating island and you have to protect it. Yeah, the tower. Yeah, that one's actually really fun. I played that, and my team won, so yeah. that was good. I like Rainmaker also. Have you gotten to play that one at all? No, I haven't played Rainmaker yet. Yeah, Rainmaker's cool because you get to – it's like capture the flag except you can shoot with the flag. But there's like a few ones where I've won, where I've, I've been the one that took it to the spot. Well, so fun. that always feels fun, you know, when you get to win the game. But yeah, there's a – are you are you going to be able to play the Splatfest at all this weekend? I don't think so. I need to see the times. So. I think it's all – I think it's all day. I think it's all day Friday and Saturday. Oh, it's not like just for three hours? No. I, I mean they used to be like you could play whenever you want. Let me check my app here. I did join a team, I will say that. You joined a team? Yeah, you have to choose one or the other. Oh, what is your team? Who are you? Mayonnaise. Oh, man, we're on the same team. <laughs> I, went, I went for Team Mayo as well because, you know. I think it's a more flexible condiment. Yeah. You can do a lot with it. It's funny because uh, it's funny because Jess hates mayo, and <laughs> and she said that she's had to block a lot of the posts from the NBC group because of all the mayonnaise content, content that's on there. Because uh, she doesn't like it at all, so I, th- I thought it was funny. I find that people that really <laughs> dislike me like really dislike me. Yeah, she's the only person I've really known I think that like hated mayonnaise. So I know a couple of people that yeah. you can't even really talk to them about yeah, it. She's probably already turned off this podcast for us saying mayonnaise too much. I'm sure. What that creamy, <laughs> delicious emulsification? <laughs> she hates the term as well. But yeah, it says it says eight four to eight five. It doesn't say any time. So uh, well, well, then I will. Well, no, oh no, it says eleven to eleven. I guess it's, yeah, it's 24 hours, so it goes from 11 o'clock Friday to 11 o'clock on Saturday. So you could play, like, Friday night at yeah, whatever time in play. the morning. So, cause I didn't, cause I'm working, like, pretty much all day Friday and, you know, in the, in the day Saturday, so I didn't think I'd be able to play it, but I might be able to play a little bit towards the end on Saturday. I don't know if I'll be up late enough Friday night, but we'll see. But yeah, I'll try to fight for the Mayo. I'm wondering if uh, oh, it shows if if you look on the app, it shows what which friends of yours are on what team. That's pretty cool. Oh, it does. Yeah, it's pretty. I, I'm just looking at it right now. If you if you click on the you know if you click on the Splatfest, it'll get into the thing. Apparently, there's going to be a new level on there as well. There's a Twilight level will be added to the Splatfest, so we'll get to see that when it happens. Well, for that, all uh, my friends that have joined a team are on Team Mayo. Oh yeah. Well, there you go. You guys are all similar thinkers. Can fight together. Against the evils of ketchup. It's just tomatoes and sugar. Yeah, sugar. pretty much. So uh, there's some – do you want to talk about the releases coming out tomorrow? Or do you want to finish yeah, with the – Well, yeah, we should talk about news a little bit. Yeah, well, I, I did talk about news. I mean, we had a little bit. I talked about Dragon Quest and, and Splatoon we didn't news. Mention, uh, but there's other news. We didn't mention the thing that I predicted in the Spotlight reaction. Ooh, what's that? Well, it was while uh, – during the Spotlight video, there's a scene where Reggie's standing inside of a room – and he's talking about the switch being the key to adventures or whatever. And he like, you remember where he's in the room and then the walls fall away. Yeah. Well, while he's in that room, the very first thing you see is a chessboard behind him. I'm like, wait, are they bringing a, a <laughs> chess game to switch? And they are. Oh yeah, they are. That's true. I didn't put and that down like on my news. Realistic chess game. Like. Didn't put that down on my news list because I didn't care that much. But yeah, <laughs> there's a chess game coming. If it's not battle chess, man, I'm not into it. That's but what it they was need totally to do. like, yeah, I think that was an illusion in the presentation that there's going to be that <laughs> hyper-realistic chess game. Component. Yeah, but they're not making it, right? It's probably like Codemasters or something. Chess Master. Yeah. I had Chess Master for NES, by the way. I probably still have it somewhere. But my favorite chess game was Star Wars Battle Chess on PC. There was also a Chess 64 for Nintendo 64 that's worth playing if you can find it, <laughs> which is also like Battle Chess. But those were always fun because you could see... Like basically, when we had the when I had the Star Wars Battle Chess, I would just set up all the pieces to see like what all the different fatalities were because they all kind of kill each other in different ways. It's pretty funny to watch C three PO kill Darth Vader and stuff like that. <laughs> you know, that was probably one of my favorite ones because he like accidentally kills him. Was Darth Vader like a king or something? Uh, I think the Emperor is the king, and no, maybe Vader's the king. It's either one or one or the other. Either the Emperor, the Emperor is the king, and I think Vader's the queen. Probably, what? yeah, it makes sense. Yeah, and I think because uh, I don't remember, I don't remember if Obi Wan's in it. I mean, he is in it, but I don't remember if he's an actual movable guy or not. Because you see, the, po- the pawns are just a bunch of Yodas. <laughs> I don't remember what they are. I mean, they're stormtrooper pawns, obviously. Actually, I think the pawns are R two D twos. Makes sense. Well, when is the is there a release date for that chess game? No, I don't think so. No, oh, okay. 
There were some release dates revealed, though, I think. Well, this is go down the li- list in order. Uh, Cinemora, that, that, uh, fight, the shooter, shoot 'em up game is coming out next week, August 8th. So that's cool. Monster Hunter Stories gets a September 8th release. That's like that, uh, kitty version of Monster Hunter that I think is, looks super cool for 3DS. And, uh, Sonic Mania comes out on the 15th also of August. Nice, Sonic. Yeah. Which I'm super psyched about. So psyched that we're going to have a full-on Sonic episode next week. We need to, because I just bought a bunch of Sonic. Games. With friend of the show, John, who's uh, probably the, uh, somebody I know that's more into... Uh, he's probably more into Sonic than anybody else I know. Or at least he knows more about it, because he grew up with the Sega and all that. Yep. So he played... I mean, I played those games, but I'm not very good at them. But I'm going to try to play as much as I can of the Sonic stuff. Post that to our YouTube channel, so look out for that. And uh what else... Oh, a uh, big release is, um, I don't know if this was announced last week or not, but I just found out about it. The uh, Mario Plus Rabbids is coming out on the 29th. It has an actual release date now of August. Was that old news or did I just miss it? I'm not sure. I know they've released more like uh, footage of it. Yeah. Well, I mean, I got I got an email from uh, Play Asia asking me if I wanted to like pre-order it and that they were sending it out on the 29th. That's how I figured out about it. And then I looked online and it, and it said it was an official release date. So I was like, oh, shit, it's at the end of the month, so... You know, if anybody's planning on getting into that, I don't know. People keep saying good things about it, so maybe I'll change my mind by then. I'm still. What about um? Uh, how do you feel about the new Mario rating? The new what? The new Mario game. It's got a uh, E10 plus rating in Europe. Oh, uh, Odyssey does. Mario Odyssey. Yep. Yeah. I think um, it's because of the jiggle physics. That's my <laughs> prediction. Yeah. Did Did you see that they changed the cover of uh, Super Mario Odyssey? Did you catch that? Yeah, they got rid of the sombrero. Yeah, they replaced the Mario with the sombrero with Mario swimming. I thought that was pretty funny. And it's just like a little small picture in the corner, but they switched it up. Supposedly that another. was a design choice, and it wasn't. You shouldn't read too much into it. Yeah, it wasn't like uh, based on the outrage. Of yeah, it wasn't anything like oh Mario might look racist on the front, so maybe we should take this off. I don't know. The uh, apparently the guys who who made the uh, HD version of Final Fantasy XII are looking at bringing a game to Switch. Did you see that? Well, that's cool. Virtuos is their name. They like said a AAA title. Yeah, they just said they're ta- porting a AAA title. They didn't say what it was, but they've worked on you know they did like Batman Return to Arkham and Assassin's Creed and. Final Fantasy 12 and Final Fantasy 10, 1 and 2. So that'd be crazy if they did, if they brought the Zodiac Age Final Fantasy 12 over. Then I guess I would have to play that game. <laughs> I never played 12 ever. I, I thought about it, but I just don't really have, I don't have time to play games like that. But if it came out for, for the Nintendo system, I'd have to play it for the show. So, but we'll see. Uh, speaking of porting stuff over though, did you see that Capcom said they were going to port some stuff over and they actually announced a, a couple that were going to bring over? No. Well, Capcom, they said that they were uh, happy with their Street Fighter sales, with their Ultimate Street Fighter sales. Apparently, it sold 450000 in the first quarter. They said that was good and better than they thought. So they're planning on porting Resident Evil Revelations 1 and 2 to Switch. Oh, I did see that. Yeah. yeah. Which is weird. I mean, Resident Evil Revelations 1 was on 3DS, and then the sequel was not on any Nintendo system, weirdly enough. But the 3DS... Was one on the Wii U as well? Yeah, they ported it to Wii U after 3DS. But the game on 3DS is good. Like, I have it. I bought a... It's one of the few 3DS cartridges that I have. But it's a good game. I never beat it because I, you know, didn't have enough ammo to beat the boss at the end, which seems to be... I'm sure you've dealt with that. That happens to me a lot. You use the 3D well. I will say that. Yeah. Well, it, that's what happens. It happens to me a lot with every res, with a lot of Resident Evil games. Resident Evil 2, that happened to me too, where I ran out of ammo on the last boss. So I can't beat him. I basically shoot him with everything that I have, and he's still not dead, and then I have no ammo. So I have to, like, try to knife him to death, which you can't do, and you get killed. So maybe if I get it again on Switch, I can get through it and kill that last guy. But that's kind of cool. You know, that's Resident Evil on, on Switch. It's not – I wish it was the Resident Evil GameCube Remake HD version on there that all the other systems got, but not Nintendo. Because that game was awesome on GameCube when it came out. Oh, yeah, and then bring it back on HD on a – Nintendo console where it all started. Yeah, where it was, it, it, I yeah. felt like it was such a stab in the back for this. Like, oh yeah, this was a Nintendo game that Nintendo like produced. Um, we're gonna release it on every system that's not Nintendo. It's kind of a shitty thing to do. So that's what they should have done is just release that. I would have been. That was the first thing I thought when I saw it. I was like, oh, Resident Evil GameCube. And I was like, no. Oh well, but it's still a good sign. Resident Evil will be on Switch. So yay. Apparently, speaking of Capcom, they also unveiled that Shinakuma is unlockable in, in uh, Ultra Street Fighter 2. He was in there. 
you can use a code that involves you basically selecting characters and then canceling them, and then you go to like random and hit L and R, and and you get them. But he's he apparently, it was something like that in the original when you had to use a code to get him in one of the original yeah. games. Apparently, he's way too powerful, and you can't use him online. But you could use him on the arcade mode, so that's cool. Cool. Something they added last minute there. But you still have to put in a complicated code to use it. I think so. I think you'd probably have to do it every time. I don't know. I haven't tried it yet. I just I just found out about it just a little bit ago. Uh, Nintendo's teasing some pre-orders, sort of, for the <laughs> for the uh, Super Nintendo. Well, Classic. yeah, they're saying there will be pre-orders starting this month. Yeah. Well, I figured that since it comes out next month, it doesn't really say a whole lot, but at least they're saying something about it. I guess it's just getting people riled up. I think, even though they're trying to, <laughs> yeah, because supposedly they're going to have pre-orders and they're going to have a healthy amount released. Yeah, which, which, what does that mean? Like, double seven. what they got? <laughs> yeah. We're gonna send seven to each store this time instead of four. No. What was up with that, uh, Amazon treasure truck? Did you hear about that? Apparently there were some trucks around that had NES classics I don't know. in them. It's weird that they're still, like, people are just sitting on those to, like, just to get people to, I don't know. Cause I, yeah, I talked They're like to, bait for other things. <laughs> yeah. I, well, I texted a friend of the show, John. Well, I texted both of you about it to see if, uh, what it was. And I thought that maybe it was some sort of like Amazon goodness of their heart thing where they're like, Hey, we got like this amount of NES classics. Maybe we should just go get in a truck and sell them to people on the streets. That's what I thought it was. But no, you still have to buy stuff online and all that. And they were all sold out apparently in a couple minutes, but some people I knew online got them. So that's why I was hoping that you could just walk and get it. You know, that would be the nice way to do it, but no, it all has to be through the internet and have to deal with bots and all that shit. But I think that's all I got for news. Aside from releases coming out tomorrow, do you got anything else for news that I missed? I do not, other than to say, yeah, the chess game's not made by uh, Nintendo. Yeah. <laughs> Is it Chess Masters? And it's just out. It, no. Oh, it's not Chess Master. No, it's. Uh, no, I mean, I was hoping the guys that made them were called Chess Masters, <laughs> like the developer. No. But, uh,. Everybody's saying they wish that it was Battle Chess. <laughs> yeah, dude, Battle Chess is the shit, it, man. Make it a said. make it a virtual console chess sixty four game. <laughs> That'd be great. So uh, we'll move on to our releases. Oh yeah, uh, well, my, my, I guess it's gaming related and it's personal news. I'm going to go to uh, the Portland Retro Gaming Expo. Oh yeah, yeah, you got plane tickets. Yeah, I got all my tickets to, for that. So. All I need to take care of now is my, uh. What about the hotel? My housing. Yeah. Yeah. That's the next stage. Yeah. I don't know. I, yeah, I really don't. I was, I was thinking about it, but yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't think I can afford it, really. I really can't either. I just, yeah. <laughs> I found plane tickets for pretty cheap. As much as I would like to go, I don't think I'll be able to make it, unfortunately. But you can, you know, you can come, go there and wear your, and wear your shirt and all that and talk about the podcast. Yeah. I'm going to try to reach out to, um, well, especially the Retronauts dudes and see if I can, do like a recording with them because after the last convention i saw a lot of people posted stuff where they'd recorded them so oh really yeah i really like, wanted if to i get, get a hold of them ahead of time maybe i can do like yeah i really wanted like, them to be guests but i kind of wussed out and didn't ask them i but, mean uh, i could just do like a field recording or something we probably could have just to, well yeah you can do you can download like free recording stuff for your phone or something or however however you want to do it but uh yeah we, we could have lured bob to our room with more beer or something <laughs> yeah <laughs> like hey it's true well, I'll definitely mention Spotted Cow and see if that helps trigger, you know, memory of who I am. <laughs> I don't know. They they said that they remembered me from last year, so who knows? Maybe they do actually remember. But the uh, I'll get another chance to see the uh, Nintendo PlayStation. It's going to be there too. Oh yeah, and you can meet like uh, whoever else is there, and like Metal Jesus or whatever NES Jesus, whatever he's called, he'll be there. Yeah, all the uh, like West Coast YouTube people, gaming people, will probably be there. Yeah. Unless I, unless I get some sort of crazy job where I end up having a lot more money as of right now. doesn't look like it's in the cards. Yeah. But what's in the cards for tomorrow release? Uh, <laughs> there's not that much, but I haven't had that fanfare in there for a while, so I thought we'd throw it in there. Retro Cities of Rampage comes out for Switch tomorrow. Did you ever – did you get that on any of the other systems? I have it for 3DS. Yeah, I got it for – Because it was part of a bundle, wasn't it? Like one yeah, of the humble buttons? Yeah, did you play it ever? Mm, just for a second. Yeah, it's pretty. It, it's pretty like in your face from the very beginning. It's like, oh hey, there's this reference from this movie, and then here's another one, and here's another one. It's really quick. But yeah, you can play that on Switch now. Arrow Fighters Two comes out for the SNK game of the week. There's another game called Puzzle Adventure Blockle. I don't know what that is. Another game called Slime San, and another game called Use Your Words, which looks like a 
party game that's interesting involving like you uh it's like uh come up with a caption for this picture or like you know describe this in however many letters like it looks kind of fun if you're into like doing creative word puzzle type stuff you know i I looked at some of the there's actually a little preview on there for it in the coming soon stuff on the eShop. so i did look at it for a little bit but yeah that's what we got for tomorrow nothing too huge but the switch library keeps uh getting bigger and bigger it does i mean retro city rampage is pretty big and they are getting a sequel to that right called like hawaii shakedown or something yeah. eventually I, I know i think that was in the indies so that's on there yep. cool all right i think that's all i got for news and stuff if you want to take a break we can get to the spoiler factory of breath yeah. of the wild and you might not want to be around for this next yeah one. so yeah if you're we're warning you now the the rest of, the rest of the, of the podcast will be all about the end of Breath of the Wild. I know it took me like four months to beat it, but <laughs> finally got to it. But some but I understand some people like don't even have the game still if they're trying to get it on Switch. So it actually took you five months. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. Well, now that it's August to the day. Yeah. Came out on March third. Oh sure, yeah. So anyway, we'll be we'll be right back with Zelda stuff. Stay tuned. Alrighty. If you beat it already. Finally made it through Breath of the Wild. Five months. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, it was probably like a hundred hours, maybe. I don't that's know. Like those. I mean, twenty hours a month. That's that actually kind of speaks to the game, I guess. And don't get me wrong. Like I like Zelda. I like Breath of the Wild a lot, but this game was wasn't focused enough for me, I guess, for me to stay into. This is probably the longest it's take me to taken me to beat any of the Zelda games when they came out. You know. Because I'm normally pretty quick on that stuff. Because it's, uh, but this one was like, you know, it wasn't as focused as it was. Kind of like maybe it was like a little bit too much. Like you can just do whatever you want, whenever you want. Oh yeah. But it wasn't like that. I didn't seem like didn't feel like there's really a driving force for me. To, you know, for like when you get done with this thing, it's like okay, go to the next thing because the story's pushing you there. You know, like I played Twilight Princess for like 14 hours when that game came out, like straight. And I even wanted to stop playing, but the story kept going because I think like I got to the point where you know i was like not the wolf and i had to go to the next thing and i was like i needed to see what's over there you know and so I don't right know. in this one yeah so full yeah. spoilers like this game's not really story driven like yeah sure they uh if you get all the memories you're sort of getting a story yeah. out of that yeah and i did and i did get all the memories i found that well i mean uh, yeah i found the one in the in the castle well, that little, one was. I had a little bit of trouble finding yeah, that one. Jess actually time. helped me find that. She figured it out because we were trying to find the little. I forget what they're called. The little rickets in the wall, you know, because there's yeah. only a certain spot that has that. And we we're also looking for the gazebo, but the gazebo's gone. Like it's not. It's destroyed. But I yep. kind of. Uh, well, I had the hardest time. I was trying to find it, and then I looked online because I just couldn't find it, and it turned out it was in the castle. So I would have never found it if I didn't look out online for that. But once I got in there to the castle, she she helped me find it. Because it was in the corner, but yeah, that was uh, I found it, and then and then you have to find a thirteenth one after that, which is annoying. You come back and they're like, that one took a little while, but oh. I knew I knew where to go. I just couldn't find it once I went to the right place. Oh yeah, I I've, I've, we found that one pretty quick. Um, because I was like, yeah, it's got to be over by the dueling peaks where all the dead guardians were, and we kind of just lined up the lined up the mountains in the background and found it. I kind of just walked around till I found it, and I, but I didn't feel like it took that long. It was Fort Hatino, Hatino. Near the Hateno Village, which is where your house is. I went straight to the Dueling Peaks stable. Is how I found it. The oh. the horse stable. I just walked north from there. Oh, okay. Well, I just yeah. went to Fort Hatino because I've yeah. been there before. It's probably close to there as well. I mean, I was. Uh, it is. It's cause, within the. Yeah, it's probably in between both the of confines. them. Yeah, but that's but the first thing I thought of. I just was that um was the Dueling Peak area. So I just warped right there and just and walked and just walked north to it. But I'm I happy to say I found all the memories through talking to that one guy. What yeah. his name is. Oh yeah, no, I did for the most part too. The artist, the white hair guy, yeah. Yeah, and that's why I was getting. That's why I got stuck on that castle one because I I went to every spot that he would be at and I couldn't find him. You know, 
because he like kind of disappears at the stables after after you found the the memories and if you go back and talk to him in the towns he just says like oh you found that one you know and he doesn't give you any more information oh no for the one in the castle he actually did tell me oh does he i, fa- maybe I, I found him somewhere and he's like oh maybe i didn't yeah, that's, uh... a, that's in hyrule castle oh, okay maybe i didn't find the spot where he says that then because I, yeah, I, I found him like much later like in the game like after i'd already beat it before i found the rest of the memories because i was still i think two memories short Oh, okay. Uh, I did find one more of him that I hadn't talked to. Yeah, because I know you said that there was a different ending or something. And is there a different ending for the yes. with the memories? What is the regular? What's the ending when if you don't get the memories? It just doesn't have the last scene. What is the you last? You know where scene? they're hanging out together and she's talking about. Well, we need to go talk to the king. Let him know about his daughter. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. that part's not in in it if you don't get all the memories. Yeah. What well, do you want to talk about? I mean, do you want to talk about uh, Ganon then? Yeah, let's since, talk about since Ganon. we're talking about the, uh, so uh, I don't know if you remember, but way back when I think it was E.G. Aonuma was talking about Hyrule Warriors, and and we probably even talked about this on the show, and he was talking about how he was inspired by the way that their battles were, and he said that he wanted to do something like that, and he did. That was the giant that where you fought the Beast Ganon. That was totally straight out of Hyrule Warriors. The very last Ganon. Yeah. You even fight a beast Ganon like that in Hyrule Warriors. I mean, you don't have a horse, but it's it's similar. The horse is unnecessary. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, I used it. Like I used the horse. Like if, I did. I didn't use the horse the first time because it got killed. I think, or I lost it. Yeah, the horse I... died. Actually, I, I lost the horse towards the end, though. Like he stepped on it. Actually, <laughs> the, yeah, the Ganon beast stepped on the horse and killed it. And I was like, "Fuck, really? Like your horses can die? Like I didn't even know that." And it took me a minute. It took me a minute to figure out that I had to change to the special bow. Like they give it to you, and it doesn't that automatically switch to it. So I did. Oh, me too, man. So I did shoot those spots for a while with the regular bow that I was using, and it said like bow's about to break, and I'm like, what? I just got this, and then I like looked, and I was like, oh shit, I'm not even shooting with the right thing. That's why it's not working. But yeah, it was really. I, I found myself running into the feet of the of the beast a lot with the horse. Because it's kind of confusing to, and I rarely didn't really use a horse that much for for nope. Zelda, so yeah, so it was kind of a little. But I did use it. I mean, I used it for like those shooting them on the side, you know. And there's it's, one thing we could say about this game is that the horse. I mean, there's probably some side quests with the horse that are great, but the horse isn't necessary to play all the way through the game. Yeah, I rarely used it at all. I mean, it was all. Horse. And we talked about that before. We just used the Rivali's Gale and uh, and the fucking whatever the sail. That's the way to do it. It's way quicker than using a horse or just sail from anything, you know. I didn't find it all that difficult, I guess. But I, but my, I mean, I was pretty stacked when I went well, there. I beat, I beat Gan in my second try, so yeah, it was yeah. pretty easy. I, I didn't die at all. I didn't use any. Well, I did use food on the first Ganon. Yeah, I just used one f- food, and I think uh, Mephis Grace. Well, that's and, why and I it lost happened the, the second time I around. Food. I went and bought a bunch of yeah, or I went and made a bunch of food and went back and then yeah. I easily beat it. Yeah, I, I went in there with like 10 hearty radish dishes, and I think I only used three maybe total for the whole thing. The castle was fun, though. Did did you find the shield? Apparently no. the, high, the high real shield is in there. I didn't find it, though. But I didn't really... No, I didn't find the shield. I found... Yeah, uh, I didn't go... I didn't look through recipe. all the rooms. Oh, yeah, I didn't find that. I was looking around for it, kind of. I kind of like... I didn't really like look through all the rooms. I kind of just like climbed up the wall and like sailed in there. <laughs> I didn't I didn't really like... Uh, like on the top part, I kind of like Raleigh's scaled my way in. So I, I sort of did too the so first I time. I so just, I didn't do it the way they expected me to. I've gone back to beat Ganon. I think I beat him five or six times now. Oh, wow. <laughs> and I've explored the castle a little more. Yeah, I mean, it's easy. There was something I thought of. Uh, there was something I thought of after I beat it, which I know they don't do, but I really wish they would have, is that I was like, you know what they should do is they should give you sort of a new game plus where you go back into the world and like Ganon's gone, you know, and all the, and like. And like you know, it's like a brighter world. But every time the blood moon comes out, he comes back. Like they should, they should have done that. Oh, that'd be I terrible. Thought, I thought that would be interesting. You know, like it'd be like a new world, and like a lot of the bo- and a lot of the monsters are gone. But then the blood moon goes and it comes back, and you got to beat it again, and it'll go back to that world. I thought that'd be a cool like way to make the end, make like a a post game thing that's interesting. You know, like post ending. I thought that would be a cool thing. I mean, sure, they could probably DLC that later, I guess. 
But after I did Maybe that, I was like, like a super blood moon or something. Yeah. Well, I mean, if they did it like, or give you like a post game where you can actually play after Ganon's dead, you know, and like a lot of that, a lot of maybe that slime shit's gone and you can climb some more stuff that you can climb before. Like maybe put some extra shrines there that you can only get to after Ganon, you know, stuff you like that. You can go and bury the remains of all your friends. Yeah. You could take your sword and stick it in Ganon's head. <laughs> He didn't really, uh, I was kind of disappointed that he, well, I mean, I guess he, he's not really, he's like Ultra Ganon or whatever they call him. Yeah, he's not an actual character. He he's not really, the actual he Ganon. He communicates with you. He's not going to be, he doesn't say anything, you know, he doesn't have the beard. Well, I mean, he has the hair, but all the bosses that you fought had the hair, had the Ganon hair, you know. He's not humanoid at all. Yeah. He's yeah. like a big spider thing and then he turns into like a beast. Yeah. Did you have a hard time uh, with the first version of Ganon at all? Like figuring out how to make him when he's all fire, like make him not fire? Well, like I said, I just, I didn't have any healing items the first time I fought him. Yeah. So he killed me, but once I had healing items, I was able to surmise how to beat him pretty yeah. easy. Yeah, I used the, like, uh, the camel thing, where you, where you like, where you charge your sword and, and strike him with lightning. That worked really well. I used oh, that I didn't for even a while. That. Yeah. I used that on the last battle and actually works. It worked really well when he was like on fire and you can't hit him. You can do what that. What I do is I just, uh. You can do that and I it'll just, knock him out. I just pummel him with ancient arrows until he's at, cause he'll, he'll start at half energy because oh, yeah. of all the divine beasts. Yeah. So. And then you hit him with ancient arrows until he's down to a quarter energy and then he's really easy to beat after that. Oh, yeah. I didn't do that because I didn't want to waste my arrows. Even though I mean, it's the last boss. Use them on? Yeah, <laughs> I know. Well, I don't know. I mean, I thought maybe there'd be a later part where I had to use them. Yeah. But I, I didn't use them. No, I, I basically, cause when you, when he turns into the fire thing, when he starts getting, when he turns all red, your arrows yeah. don't hurt him at all. Like even the ancient ones don't. So I, so I was like, that was why I was doing, I would wait till he came down and then I used the, the like the lightning on him. So. Yeah, I think the way I beat him was kind of cheap. I just yeah. well, I mean, I probably you I beat him with, him with ancient arrows. I don't even think he ever caught on fire. Yeah, I think you beat him way quicker than I did. So <laughs> you didn't get to the part where he because he'll like a part where he'll turn completely red and you can't hit him. Yeah, you, you can't hit him, and all the arrows just go straight through him. Like they don't hurt him because I tried shooting with ancient arrows when he did that, but they didn't. I and mean, all I had him. to do is the shield deflect the second half of the battle with him, and then he was done. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it was yeah. ancient arrows and then shield deflect. That's all I had to do. Yeah, yeah, I still I'm still not very good at that shield deflect like i feel like i got had it for a while and then i didn't have it after i don't know I, like i could do it a couple times and i couldn't do it a couple times and yeah i don't know and you have to do it at the end there but yeah i'm still i'm still not very good at it but yeah it was well, uh, you beat the game so but i made it the made it through enough. now yeah i went I, I went back and you know after that i went back and tried the trial of the sword again i died quicker <laughs> i died on like the fifth level I was trying to play that, like, you know, I was trying to, like, use my bombs and throw them at people, and one of the guys threw the bomb at me, and threw it back oh, at me, yeah. and it had blew it up, and it killed me. So it was a pretty hilarious way to die, at least, <laughs> you know. Cause one of the Moblins picked up one of the one of the blue bombs and killed me with it, so. But, yeah, I mean, uh, what do you what do you think about the game as a whole? Like, it's, I mean, I don't know. I, I really, I like it for what it is, but maybe it's just open world games, but it, I, had, I guess, I'd obviously, you could tell it had a hard time hooking me, you know story-wise and all that and i hope that i mean i really hope that the next zelda goes more goes back to kind of the regular zelda not completely but more you know have it be a little bit more focused is, is what i think i'd like it i'd like it to get a little bit back on what they you know with some bigger dungeons and maybe a little more story but still a big open world i guess is what i would think yeah i'd say uh this is the best game i've played in years it, i haven't had a game I think it's hooks in me this hard since I don't even know, like... For 100 hours? Yeah. I mean, I don't even know. Like, I guess the closest thing was maybe Xenoblade, and I never even beat that. Like, this game... But you put 100 hours into it still. (laughs) Yeah, this game I played for, I think, over 100... Between 140 and 160. Oh, geez. Yeah, you played it a lot more than I did. And, like, I played it, like... I bought a special light bulb so that I could make the lights in my living room green while I played it because I just wanted to, like, (laughs) increase the atmosphere. Yeah, you did. Did you buy that specifically for Zelda? I didn't know that. Uh, it was part of the reason. Yeah. I, I, I wanted to have ambient light while I played video games, which is really nice. Yeah, sure. But, uh, I mean, I just completely lost myself in this game, and I, I'm on board with what you're saying. I want the next Zelda to have better dungeons, because if you took all the shrines and put them together, you would get, you know, they would, uh, they would assemble several dungeons total. True. But you never really get, like... There was never a point where you were like deep in the belly of a dungeon and you were like scared that you wouldn't be able to finish before you got out. Or, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. there was never that sense of panic. Like, even in the Divine Beasts, which were the only like real dungeons, I would say. Oh, um, yeah. 
and they, they were still like you could leave them at any point. Yeah, you could. And all of them were kind of like they're like above ground, you know, like they're well, obviously they're beasts, but you can see the outside world. So it didn't really feel like, you know, like the normal dungeon where there's like no windows and you can't see. And, you know, like yeah, I think it, of like the sky dungeon or whatever they call it in a. Uh, uh, Twilight Sword. Yeah. Are you talking about the Twilight one with the weird chickens? Oh, yeah, that is what I'm talking about. Yeah. Man. With the chickens with people heads. <laughs> yeah, and boobies. Yeah, those things are so fucking weird looking. Okus, Akus, something like that. But yeah, those same. those dungeons were like, there were four of them and they were pretty small. I think yeah. I beat all of them in one, like, go. Sure. There might have been one that I, like, saved and then went back to it, but. Yeah. Um, I would definitely be a fan of actual dungeons being back. Yeah. I do, I did miss the dungeons. Um, but everything else about the game is wonderful. The gameplay, the atmosphere, the open world, the seamlessness of everything, like, it was beautiful. It was a wonderful thing. Yeah. I mean, I liked it. There's a lot of it I liked. I liked that there wasn't a nagging thing that told you that was like, hey, listen, or, you know, go here, or whatever. I liked that, but I wish it had a little bit more direction to it. I understand the, the greatness of it, of it being like you can go wherever you go, wherever you want, whenever, but it'd be cool if there's a little bit more of a through line, you know, from one thing to another. That, you know, make it optional, but still make it there, kind of. And I guess there was sort of, but not really. I, mean, I there will was, say, like, it's much as they promised the world was really big, the world is huge. Yeah. But it very quickly feels small once you have all the towers. And, uh, yeah, there's a lot of found to everything. explore, but... Well, that you, sense of discovery is gone pretty quick once the, uh, that grand sense of discovery, I should say, where you're like in a new, like, biome or whatever. Yeah. Well, once you've kind of seen all of the bad guys too, unless it's like a, you know, higher, like it's a different color, I guess. And some, a little bit more enemy variety would, would have been nice too, I guess. Yeah. More bosses. Yeah. There yeah. really were not very many bosses. Like you had the guardians, which are bosses. I guess yeah. you could call them bosses. Well, then, and then kind what? of the, like, the uh, actual like divine like beasts, the Hinox and the Talus. I guess could sort of be considered bosses. Yeah, but not that much. I don't know. So I do miss bosses. I miss yeah sentient beings that you're fighting that are like taunting you or whatever. Like yeah, sure, all the moblins and the and the bo- Bokoagoblins or whatever. Bokoblins. Yeah, they seem like they have like <laughs> intelligence or whatever, but yeah, they're not like they're not like taunting you. They're not like yeah. Well, they never really said anything to you, I guess. No, Except and I remember like before this came out, just being completely captivated by like, what are we going to discover out there? You know, Ganon's been gone for a hundred years. Like, are we going to find good monsters? And I was really like surprised there were no good monsters. Yeah, that would have been an interesting take. I guess that's kind of a Zelda thing. There's like the town of good monsters has been in a lot of Zelda games. Like, like which one? Well. It, wasn't there a town of good monsters in Zelda 2? Oh, I don't know. I I hardly played Zelda 2 at all. There's one in um, Link to the Past. There's the town of monsters that you go to. Oh, you mean in the dark in the dark world? Yeah. Yeah, like the whatever the equivalent of of Kokoriko or Kakariko. Yeah. yeah. Were there? I, thought, I don't know. I, I just thought was, that they attacked I was just you there too. Be like good moblins yeah. or whatever. Yeah, ones that something. have shops or something that uh, <laughs> that won't attack you. Yeah. I mean, I mean you don't the closest s- you get is that monster guy, but he's still a human. I still never got any masks from him. <laughs> I never found him a second time. I don't know why. I just never found him, and I never bought any masks from him. And then I, I think got I bought everything yeah. from him that I can. Yeah, I never, I never found him to where he was selling stuff. I never ever found him, and I never found the horse god. I didn't find that. I mean, did you find the horse god? I found the horse god, but I couldn't figure out what to do with the horse god. Yeah, because there's some sort of uh, there's a, there's a like quest involving it i don't know if you're supposed to take a picture of it or try to get it to go to a different area or something like that i did get a picture of it i, ha- I know i have a picture of it. yeah i don't know if it's, it might might be that they wanted you to move it to a different part of the map but i never actually found it but i also got distracted like with beating the game so i kind of like left that quest like i was looking for it but there's uh, still definitely a lot to do um, yeah there is i've slowed my roll on it big time since i beat it like two two or three months ago yeah i, I mean there's a lot of stuff left to do but it's like how much am i gonna actually do like I probably might go back and play some more shrines, but I don't necessarily feel compelled to play through all of them. Yeah, I don't know. It's it's it just kind of I don't know. I guess that I'm I'm I'm, I'm kind of a, a very much a story guy for games like this, and maybe because their story wasn't really there, it had a hard time keeping me attached to it. I guess there's some hope that that's going to be in the yeah. second DLC. Yeah, where yeah. we get some story content. Yeah, and I mean, and I did, and when I played it, I liked playing it a lot. Like I had a great time playing it every time. It's just like it wasn't really, I wasn't really like wanting to return to it as quick. I guess I don't know. This game just, it also just has this different place that like 
It's almost up there with like Mario 64 for me because I played it at this event where it was like surrounded in mystique. Yeah. You know, I, I had just barely seen any footage of it before then. Well, oh, for yeah, sure. I saw yeah. hours of footage or whatever. But so. Yeah. Well, yeah, it definitely has like all that as well. Yeah. To and so I played it for that first like 30 minutes or whatever we got to play it. I don't even think it was 30 minutes. And um, so that itch to like go back and play it some more. Yeah, I think it was, it was really 20. strong. So once yeah. I actually had it in my hands, like it's just hard to believe that, you know, months later I've, I've played through that game. I beat it and like kind of bored of it and it's weird to think that yeah after well, all I mean, that anticipa- that anticipation that happens when you put 160 hours into something that can happen it's bound to happen right right <laughs> so uh out of the out of like the beasts like who was your favorite beast that wasn't ganon to fight or like who did you think was the coolest of those other bosses oh you mean the uh bosses you fight in the divine beasts yeah yeah the other the other versions of ganon are they all called like different something ganon I think that the uh I hardly even remember them that much to tell you the truth. Like I remember that one that was kind of hard to beat that everybody thought was hard. Yeah, the, the lightning one. Yeah, we have to like grab the thing and like bring it up next to him and it'll like That shock one I did him. have to I I feel ashamed but I did have to look online to figure that out. Yeah, story. I looked online too, but um, it was like such a crazy way to do it that I probably would have never figured it out. The fire one I actually was kind of funny because I hadn't fought the fire beast in the temple yet. I just went to Ganon and I had to fight the fire guy. And uh because if you don't beat all those guys before you go to the castle, you have to fight them there. Yeah. And so I fought him there first, and I beat him. But when I actually got to him, he gave me more trouble. Like, I don't know why I just had better luck with him the first time I fought him. But I'd say, yeah, the, eh. Are you saying? Are you, which, which of the temples was my favorite? Probably Fire Temple. I like the Fire Temple a lot. Yeah. So so you're saying that if you go, if you don't beat any of the beasts and you go straight to Ganon, you have to fight all of them there before you, you fight, fight Ganon? You have to fight the bosses of them, yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, they show up in the castle. Oh, crazy. I found that out the hard way because I went to the castle early and, and yeah, it was like Fire Beast Ganon or whatever, like showed up in a room on my way up. Yeah, it's uh, Fire Blight Ganon, Wind Blight yeah, Ganon, Blight. Mm-hmm. Thunder Blight Ganon. Yeah, Thunder Blight Ganon was the one you had to get to shock himself. Water Blight Ganon, Calamity Ganon. And Dark Beast Ganon. And Master Koga was, was a boss also at the Yiga Hideout. That, that level was kind of cool. Like, I, I had fun with that. The Yiga Hideout's another thing I might have ruined for myself because I just, just went through with Ancient Arrows and killed everybody. <laughs> Man, you, you were more, uh, you used a lot more Ancient Arrows than I did. The only time I used I them still was, have a shit ton of them left, too, yeah. man. I have like 15 left, maybe. I have like 50 something. Oh, jeez. But the only time I used them was when I get pi- got pissed off at those guardians because I couldn't reflect the, the beam at the right time and I kept losing shields. Yeah. I would just shoot them with the arrow. I'd be like, fuck you, and just kill them. In one yeah, hit. at least you get the, the drops. If you use the ancient arrows on normal enemies, you don't get their drops. Yeah, after you told me that, I was afraid to use them on anything. But if you have the, if you have Majora's Mask, you can just, uh, those guys won't attack you. Even Lionel's won't. So, oh really? Yeah. So you can. It's it's the Majora's Mask is basically like having all of the creature masks in one mask. Oh okay. So all the because I, I yeah I took like a selfie with one of the with one of the Moblins with that on. But yeah, it's supposed to work for everything. I've got some selfies with my uh, with with oh, Lionel's. <laughs> yeah, I've got a I've got a Lionel. I think my selfie, I, think. I think my favorite boss of the whole game was Lionel. <laughs> That was the hardest. Actually, the one that gave me the most trouble. Yeah, I actually really ended up loving Lionel's just because of like how hard I how hard it was to beat that first one, you know, and it felt like such a sense of accomplishment to get to beat him that I was like I ended up kind of loving Lionel's after that. I would argue that was the hardest part of the game was the It was Lionel. You know, yeah, probably. It was Lionel. Yeah, that that part was I thought I had hard. to beat him. So I did actually beat him, and then I found out later I didn't have to. But. Yeah. I mean, it was it was that Lionel, and it was also when I first started playing the game, and I started going to just exploring areas that I wasn't supposed to go to. Like, that part was really hard, too, because you're yeah. not supposed to be there. Have you tried the, the hard mode? I really want to try it. I just haven't done it yet. I played it for a second. Yeah. Because I, I, I don't know. I because it's kind of like it, like I mentioned before it's kind of like new game plus cuz you can get a lot of really good weapons right at the beginning there you know if you can survive long enough to get them <laughs> but some guys you can sneak up and just steal them from them before they get to them you know but yeah I like uh, what about the uh, I mean what about the, your overall thoughts on like the weapons and how they broke and all that well it's like a lot of people online were saying it sucks that the weapons break but as you get more powerful the monsters have better weapons that you get from yeah. them, and there's so many of them. Like I was yeah. always out, I, I was always out of space to take them. Oh yeah, same here. And you can even like if there's a weapon you really like, 
take a picture of it and set it to the, uh, oh, yeah, the Sheikah slate, and you can find it. And you can track it, yeah. That, that was a really yeah. cool thing. I like that you could take pictures of stuff and track it. Except for Koroks, you can do that. But now you have the Korok mask. Once you get the Master Sword, too, like it even more like nullifies like the importance of the other weapon. Yeah, weapons, well, sure, they're stronger yeah. for most of the game, but... No matter what's happening, if your like weapons are breaking, you saw the master sword that keeps regenerating. Yeah, true. And there were and there were special swords or special weapons that you got from each beast that you beat. If you went to go talk to whoever the main person of that area was, they gave you a special weapon also, which you could have rebuilt, but you had to bring them stuff. You needed specific supplies to do that. So they kind of had some special weapons in there that you could get that were stronger. After, after you beat each dungeon. I think that the uh, the crafting system where you can, like, you know, make food, it makes the game really easy if you just, like, find a good recipe and just, like, make, yeah. like spam your inventory with it. Well, yeah, I mean, that's once what I did is just make everything with hardy anything, with hardy yep. dirty ends. Or, you only need one. You don't even need to put yep. anything else in there. You just cook one hardy, hardy radish and you have, like, full recovery plus three for one radish. Yep. Yeah. Same with the that's, durian, same with the That's all you need, the truffles. yeah. Yeah, same with dirt with the hardy durians and the hardy truffles. You just cook one of them and it'll give you full health plus whatever. So that's you know that's once you figure that out, it's there's basically no reason to cook anything else. Nope. Unless you want unless you want like some you know some attack upgrade or something where you want to be able to have uh, multiple plus swords or whatever for five minutes or fifty seconds or however it works. I definitely stopped like very early on. Stopped making anything with monster parts. Yeah. And I ended up using all my monster parts on that monster guy yeah. to get well, all my special armor and you only masks make, and stuff. Yeah, you only make like potions and stuff, right? With the monster right. parts. Yeah, and, the only and thing- there's just a few parts of the game where like maybe you want potions, but once you like get to the area, you can usually buy armor that does what the potions do. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, cuz uh, yeah, normally I would but the only potion I would use is like the endurance potion. Yes, it would help me climb higher. But once I got, I mean, I, I didn't upgrade it that much, but once I got to where I'm at now, I'd never really used it again after that because I didn't really need it. Especially once you get, like, the Rivali's Gale and uh, and you get higher, all that. I really wanted to go and get all the hearts, but it takes so long. <laughs> like, I really wanted to, because I always max out all my hearts on all the other Zelda games before I actually beat the game, and I wanted to do it at this one. But it got to the point where I was just getting so impatient, I just wanted to beat the game, so... I just skipped out on it. But I think I was only missing five hearts, maybe, maybe six of the whole thing. Like, how many did you get when you were at the end? I think I have, like, Cause it's I think like you have up to 30 hearts, It's right? like 30 total, right? Yeah, so I think I beat it with, like, 24 or 25. I have, like, 23 or 24. Yeah. But I also have my uh, stamina gauge is almost three full circles. Yeah. Yeah, see, I didn't do that. <laughs> Mine's like... Did you ever find the uh, the spot where you can like, you can switch it around? Switch what around? You can take the, your upgrades to your hearts and switch it over to stamina or vice versa. Oh, no, I didn't find that. After the fact. It's actually really close to the house you buy. Oh, really? And it's like the, uh, I can't remember what it's called, but it's it's the goddess, but it's not. It's like the uh, dark goddess or something like that. Oh, weird. She's it's, like it's like a different hidden, statue. Hidden in this like, cave down below where oh, your geez. house is. Yeah, I wonder, like, I, I wonder how much stuff that I missed in it because I feel like I missed a lot of it, I guess. Because they because they put so much stuff in there that it's easy to like, like like the drag like the I never dragons. found all the great fairies. I'm still missing one of those. Yeah, like like the dragons. Like, did you do much with them aside no. from like shooting them and having having them drop a scale? Like, that's about all I did. Can you do more though? I don't know. There's like shrines that you take their stuff to. Yeah, you take their scales to shrines. Like I did that. Well, I did that for that one, the one that you found that was kind of like a. There was like a Covered quest. In eyeballs. There was like the yeah the one that had all the yeah the one that had all the goo on it. Because that one was kind of a story one. Yep, and, it, and they gave you, like, direction of where to go. Yeah, and stuff. but you have to do that for – because I found other ones, and I couldn't really – it was hard to shoot because you want to, like, shoot them with arrows and knock stuff off of them and take them to different parts. Yep. What, what was, like, one of your favorite moments in the game from playing it? Hmm. I'd say jumping off the Great Plateau the first time with the, uh, the glider, that was pretty magical. Um, oh, for sure. Yeah. And suddenly feeling like you're in this huge, wide world and you don't know what to expect. Yeah, and then you're it's just like, running towards these distant mountains. Well, then they give you, they're like, go to Kakariko Village, but you don't have to go there. You can go to the desert like I did and get killed a bunch. <laughs> yeah, I went straight to the village. So that was, was fun. But still, like, just that feeling of, like, freedom from the Great Plateau because that's all we'd really seen. Yeah, for sure. That and was all that was demos in the demo. and everything yeah. that we'd played and uh, all the, like, footage the media had put out for yeah. the game. So. 
I had a yeah. I, I had a lot of fun g- getting to the top of all the towers. Like I thought that was really great. Oh yeah. I was kind of sad when I ran out of them when I didn't have any left because all of those were like their own adventure. So I, I really enjoyed like, you know, especially when you have to deal with like the whiz robes and stuff like that on them or just all the different shit. And, or, or like if it starts raining, like I, I got to the point in the game where I didn't have any, where I had no wooden bows whatsoever. So every time it rained, I get freaked out. Yeah. Cause you couldn't do anything. I couldn't go anywhere. Yeah. Cause I can't even, cause I, all my bows were metal and I can't, you know, basically I would just like keep going and get struck by lightning and eat something and then just keep going and get struck by lightning again and just eat well, you something. you can unequip it. Can you? Yeah, as long as it's unequipped, it won't, you won't get shocked. Oh, I thought you had to have a, a bow equipped at all times though. Nope. That's what I'm saying. Cause all, cause I didn't have any wooden bows and I thought nope, that I you can just equip. unequip the one, yeah. whichever one you have and then you're just not equipped and then you're fine. Oh, yeah, I didn't know that was possible. So well, I guess that would save me getting struck by lightning multiple times. Cause there's that thunder plane where you have to like do that. It's like a whole, like, shrine quest. Oh, okay. Which I haven't beaten yet, but I have, like, started to beat it. But, yeah, um, I like to climb the towers. I really like to, uh, yeah, open up the map. One thing I really loved was how, as you get stronger, you become more confident and you start, like, well, then you you're start, like, not wandering afraid of, around yeah. a little more to, like, scarier areas. Like, by the end of the game, I was, like, you know, I'd been avoiding guardians for hours and hours. And then at the end of the game, I'm just, like, I'm I'm, I'm the guardian hunter. And I would just, like, yeah. kill as many guardians <laughs> as I could. Yeah. Well, once you got that stupid-looking guardian armor yeah. that, that you wear, which it's it's great to have it, but it looks so dumb. Like, I, I bought that. Well, I bought that, too. Like, I used it for the castle. Well, it kind of looks like a guardian. I think that's the point. It looks like a shrine. No, I know. It, it still looks stupid, though. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I understand what they're trying to go for, but he's like, it's like this, he's we're wearing like a guardian on your face and like it's covering his eyes and he can't even see. I'm just saying it's not the best designed armor I've ever seen, but it yeah. serves its purpose, I guess. He just looks really, looks really silly in it because it looks like he can't see shit. Like he's wearing like a hat that's too big for him and it's just over his eyes. I am happy that armor doesn't break. Yeah, for I sure. shields do, but yeah, it's good that armor and stuff like that. Yeah, that would be a pain in the ass. How many, like, uh, I mean, did you get, did you try to get all the armor or, like, try to get a lot of, like, the full sets of them? I mean, I got a lot of stuff. I'm sure I'm still missing, uh, especially the DLC. I haven't got any of that yet. Because I think I only but, uh, got, I don't think I only got a few full ones. I mean, I got, like, I got, like, the full Hillian one, but that one was early and you could buy that. Yeah. But I got the full climbing suit. I got all of that that I found yeah, I have in the dungeons. full climbing suit now. And I have the full... Well, yeah, yeah, I have the full guardian suit. You have the full guardian suit. I'm missing one piece of the uh, barbarian still, I think. Yeah, I think I don't, I don't have the barbarian shirt. I have the, the leggings and the hat, so I don't know. But all of those Then I have, in. like, the Sheikah armor. You can get that early on. And then I've got the uh, – there's the 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 different uh, – the two different uh, Gerudo outfits. I've got both of those. Oh, okay. There's, like, a male and female one. I've got the Dark Link outfit. Yeah, I never found that. You have it, to buy that from the monster guy. Oh, okay. Did you get any of the Amiibo outfits? No. Yeah. And th- did you scan many Amiibo for this? I only did it a couple times. The only Amiibo I scanned was the um, the wolf just to try it out, and I didn't use it very much. Oh, yeah. I never used the wolf. <laughs> I didn't ever do that. I kept forget. I I kept forgetting about it, and I never scanned the uh, I never scanned the Smash Brothers Link because I was afraid that the Epona would be like super overpowered. But then I never used it, so I never saw the Epona on there. <laughs> You know, but I did scan. Uh, I did scan the eight bit link that I have, and I got the original link hat for that. Oh, that's cool. So I did get one piece of that original armor with that. But I want to. I want to say before I forget, one of my favorite parts was the uh, was going to the Zora area when you're in that like kind of wooded area and you're like climbing and there's all those guys shooting at you. Do you remember that when you're like kind of walking through the grass? Up that mountain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was like one of my guys favorite. are popping out of the water shooting at you. Yeah, that was one of my favorite parts of the game. I thought it was really cool. And the prince kept like popping up and saying like, I'll meet you at the castle or I'll yeah. meet you up here at the bridge. I think I liked it because it kind of felt like more, felt like more of a story driven part, I guess. But right, I, and then there was the, uh, like the story tiles you'd find on your way up that were given like the, yeah. the legend. Yeah, that part was really fun. Like I had a lot of fun with that part. I thought it was really cool. And it almost kind of felt like it was its own little level because it was hidden so well. Like it seemed like it was, yeah. it didn't, I didn't feel like I was on like an, a big empty area, you know, like most of the other stuff. So it was like, it was cool. Like it felt like I, I was in this special area that I'd only be at then. So I really, I really dug that part. It's a lot of fun. And I liked, uh, I liked how you could move the, move the different dungeons in different ways. We didn't really talk about that. Yeah, that was cool. Like once you got cool the map, mechanic. you could, 
you could move it around to get to different parts. I mean, that was a new, that was a new thing. I really liked that they did a lot of new stuff for Zelda, but I felt like they should have kept some of the old stuff too. I understand that some people would say that they've done that too much in the olden games, but I'd like to see kind of a happy medium between both of them come together. I feel like it'll be, they'll probably steer more traditional with the next one. Yeah. Maybe maintain the open world, but have a, a more rigid structure to how it, how it's laid out. Maybe have a bunch more side quests. Sure. For the open world part. Yeah. Because um, there's there are a shit ton of side quests and I haven't even begun to scratch the surface. Yeah, there are, stuff. but like a lot of them, you don't. You, what do you get? Like fifty rupees, something like that. Like it's yeah. A lot of them just don't. I don't. I don't feel like I need to do that. Like for me, it was like if it didn't go to a shrine, then why should I do it? You know, I what's think the, the point? money. I, mean, was I guess an you can get some money. Thing. I think yeah. The, I think money could have been made more accessible because you just basically you find the few few places you can get money and then you just grind it yeah <laughs> you basically go uh you go bowl like the other day uh i, I was bowling and uh, i had just tried and she like hit a strike every time so i was like she just like bowled for a while and and did like and got like two thousand rupees on there you're like so, i'm gonna go make a sandwich yeah it's like that though it's yeah. like uh before before i discovered the bowling thing you were doing the flying thing and, uh, yeah what you were doing the flying thing, right? Like where you like that one dude? Where you like I did the like flying fly thing, as far and as you I go? I also did the. Uh, there's a guy at one of the uh, stables that buys prime meat off of you. So I, I would go up to the top of the mountain in the northwest corner oh, of and the go map hunting. and just yeah. kill a bunch of uh, sure. moose and um, uh, bucks and stuff. Just kill all the wild animals, the, even the foxes and the wolves. Yeah. And just get all their prime meat, then go sell it to the guy. And he could only buy like a, a limited number of them a day, so I'd have to sell them like four or five, and then like go sleep at the campfire for a full day, and then sell them five more. You know what I mean? So yeah. it was really annoying. But what I'm saying is like that's how scarce money is in the game that I just felt compelled to to grind that source once I found it. Yeah, and that was kind of annoying because like yeah, with the house, it's like you need like this much, and it's like I couldn't even imagine getting that much. But then yeah, when you found the ways to get it like that, you kind of just did it over and over again until. Until you got up to there, because you don't know like the next time you're going to find an easy way to get money, which there really isn't in yeah. the game. It's like it's just the mini games. That's how you get all your money. Yeah. So I, I thought that was a bit of a flawed thing. Like, oh, and the the Eco Clan members, I would always kill them because they carried money on them. Yeah, but you're still going to get like <laughs> maybe like ten rupees maximum out of them. No, you, you'll get like sometimes you'll get like twenty, thirty. But it's yeah. still not very much. I'm just saying, whenever they appeared, they were always worth killing for me. You always because get money, they had money. Too. Yeah, because you always get money from them. So, and yeah, and you get bananas. Like, you'd, I don't know what the whole thing with the bananas were with that, but that was a cool like diversion part, I guess. Like the whole Yiga clan hideout and all that stuff. At the end of the game, when um, when you see, or like not at the end of the game, that like final memory when like Link dies and all that. Spoilers, we already said that. Oh, when Link dies in that final 13th memory, and those guys, you know, like those two guys that are like Hyrulean guards or whatever, whenever they run up to Zelda, I thought they were Yiga clan members for a second, because they look similar. Yeah. You know, when they're like, what are you doing? And she's like, oh, carry him to the resurrection area. Go stick him in the Lazarus pit. Wake him up. How are you- have you gotten to the point where they're popping up more, like, randomly when you're running around the map? The Yiga clan? Yeah. Yeah, they. I would see them all the time. Because I've got, like, even the uh, the bigger one, like, the uh, the boss ones you see in that cave or whatever. Oh, right yeah. No, no, I never got that far. Yeah. I, I wonder why, like, why they, they would show up. I think it's after, it may be what happens after you beat the game, because I didn't notice it until after I beat Ganon. Now when I run around the map, when I'm exploring, like, not the bo- the actual boss that you fought at the end of the, the Yiga clan, but, you know, the bigger guys. Oh, yeah, um, I don't know. I didn't the notice. The ones that, like, can, like, teleport still and they can, like, throw the, the thing along the ground or whatever that attacks you. Yeah, they, like, will pop up randomly, like, all over the place when I'm just running around Hyrule and, like, it, everywhere. Like, it doesn't matter where I am. They just randomly show up. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So maybe that's one thing that changes after you beat the game. Yeah, um, yeah, I know you get the star by your name, but I didn't really notice. Yeah, I didn't really notice anything because I went and I started started again, and I was just at that same spot, you know, that I was. B- you also start to get the white moblins. Have you gotten those yet? Oh, I don't think I saw them. You'll the start to get the white versions of enemies that are like oh. the strongest. I mean, I version. found the I found the white Lionel, I fo- and I beat him, the one yeah. that's in the Coliseum. Well, there's white versions of the moblins and the bucka bloblins. Yeah, but there's a gold Lionel too, right? Or is that only in uh, the hard mode? Because I, I never, think it's only in hard mode. I never found a gold Lionel. I just found the white one, and that was the hardest one. Yeah, I think the gold enemies are all exclusive to the hard mode. Yeah, they're one step. So maybe they're not 
white, they're probably like considered silver. So like the silver Lionel that you found, and then like yeah, it's like a silver Bacaloblin and a Moblin. Yeah. With the uh, what about like the items? Like I know like I like that they introduce them to you early, but don't you kind of miss like some of the older items that are like a little a hook more shot, stuff like that? Yeah, I do. I would have loved to have a hook shot, and yeah, of course well, they got replaced by the glider and the gale. Like replaced a lot of the items. Oh sure, I mean, or a lot of like even some of the weirder stuff from like from like Twilight Princess, like the ball and chain, or like the spinner, like you know, just weird, weird stuff like that. I mean, because like I, the boomerangs in here, but it's. It's a breakable weapon that you get. From. It's a losable weapon. <laughs> you can yeah, eat, it's also you can like easily lose really, it. Is what I would strong, do most of which the I guess time. the boomerang yeah. never was, but yeah. No, I mean I like the way they implemented the boomerang and how you can throw it and catch it and all that. But I still forget sometimes that you have to catch it and I'll lose it. Yeah, there's a boomerang in the trial of the sword that I was using, which is like probably the most powerful weapon that I'd found so far. And I and I would always carry two boomerangs with me. I don't know why, just because I found them and they were strong, but I never really used them. Because I was afraid of losing them, you know, because a lot of times I would by accident. Uh, yeah, I could have done with a little more, a little more en- enemy variety in this. You oh, know, I agree. I, you know, I guess, yeah, the, yeah. the best variety you see is harder versions of the same enemies. That's, yeah. like, that's well, the variety. Of well, you thing. get the variations of the guardians in the castle once you get there. That's true. You know, so, so there was kind of that. But the others basically like guardians in the air or like the ones that don't move that still shoot you. But they're all still kind of the same thing, you know. Once I figured out the same mechanics, right? Yeah. You know, once I figured out that you could cut the legs off the guardians, they got a lot easier for me because yep. I would just cut their legs off. But I was mad. I was mad that you couldn't do that with with Ganon and that final one because he had those he had those legs. He had those guardian legs. Yeah. And I was playing it like Jess and I were playing it at the end there. She's like, "Go for those legs," and I like went and I was like, because I was like, I wanted to cut them out, but you can't. You can't cut them off because that would have been cool. Like it just cut his back legs off and he couldn't move as much. They should have let you do that. Because it'd be like, oh yeah, you remember that from those other dumb guardians. I like them to make a Zelda game with, uh, you know, that goes more back to the older Zeldas. But I would also like them to make a multiplayer Zelda game where you where you can do like a four person uh, dragon or not dragon uh, monster hunter type thing with this game. I think that'd be really cool. They would do like a side game that has like the same world, but you can just like meet up online and voice chat and go hunt monsters. That'd be sweet. Yeah, I, th- I thought that'd be or a cool. Or even game. a competitive thing, kind of like. Um... The whole player unknown battlegrounds thing that's popular right now. You can do that in the Zelda world, and oh yeah, yeah, no, I've heard about that. But and you could have the uh, everybody knows the map. Yeah, and so you, they know where to go and shit. And you and you play it with the lowest graphics, so it runs quicker. Yeah, <laughs> apparently that's what you do in that game. You have to because there's like a hundred people playing at once. Yeah, yeah, for sure. But yeah, it'd be cool. It'd be cool if they did some sort of like something like. Uh, Triforce Heroes, but on a bigger scale. I would definitely like that if they got into that. I don't know. What, what do you like? What do you think? Uh, I mean, with the Champions DLC, like, what do you think that's going to be? Do you think it's going to be just like a whole new part that's not on the map at all? I think it might be prequel based. Like, it might just go back to before the apocalypse. I mean, that's what I th- flesh some of the story out. That's what I thought too. But from what I heard, you had to have beaten the game before you play the the Champion stuff. So I think it's like a post game thing that like maybe you and Zelda go talk to the guys, the new champions, you know, that helped do that. Oh, okay. That operated the, that operated the beasts and all that. Because the amiibo are about the new ones, not the old, not the dead guys. You know, they're That's the, true. they're those new champions. So I don't know what the amiibo would do for it, but it would be cool if it's, you know, just continues on and it's like maybe a, I mean, it'd be great if it was like another 20, 20 hour thing or something like that, but I don't, it seems like a lot for DLC. Or like you had to play through those, dun- the Divine Beasts again. Or no, like a, just like an added story that's like maybe like, you know, the length of, uh, like 10 hours or 20 hours or something like that. That would be great. You know, that's not in the map. That's like a new, brand new map. Like, that'd be cool. I mean, I don't know if they would go that far, but it would be great. I mean, is there anything else you want to say on our spoiler cast? I mean, we could talk about Zelda for a really long time. We could get yeah. into the individual trials and the power ups. Oh yeah, awesome let's, they are. Why don't you, what, <laughs> I'm sure we talked about it before, but what about like the Lost Woods trials? We never even talked. I don't know if we talked about that. The you know, like the one with the guy where you have to follow him. Did you have a hard yeah, time that with that one level? Was kind of a pain in the ass, but I did eventually beat that. One. Oh yeah, no, we did talk about that before because that one was bad, but I hated the other one more. The one where you I, like get the stick weapon. I never like the, beat that one. You didn't? No. I hated that one so much. I did. I find uh, it's because, yeah, I told you before on, on one of our previous episodes that I beat it. And once I beat it, the guy was like, hey, do you want to do it again and try to do it in less time? And I was like, no, fuck you. I hate that thing. <laughs> you know, 
Like I hate that stupid trial. I don't want to do it again. So can you get two orbs from it? No, I think you could probably just get more rupees or something. Oh, okay. I, I wasn't. It wasn't worth it for me. It was like I had such I had such a hard time beating the first time that I didn't want to do it again. I don't know. I didn't look into it, but I'm sure it's just something that's not worth all the pain and anguish that I have to go through for that level. Yeah, I'm not. I'm by no means am I a completionist, and so I put a lot of time into this game, but there's still a lot left to do. I am to I am to a point, and most of the time and I plan on going yeah. back and playing it from time to time. Yeah. Oh yeah, I mean it's one of those things that you can just keep playing it, you know. And that's kind of like I kind of like regret that I get, didn't get it for the Switch because of that, because of how portable, you know, having it portable makes it more playable, I guess, to me, you know. But I was it, it was a Wii U game and I was adamant about getting it on Wii and and I ended up doing that. But I kind of wish I had a Switch version too. Not that I want to start at the beginning again, but I would even say know. just like even even not just being portable, but the fact that you can uh, put it in sleep mode at any time. Like, yeah, that helps really too. Nice. Well, I mean, you could save at any time in in the game. Yeah, but putting it in sleep mode is great because you don't. I mean, for the Switch, you just don't really have to worry about saves anymore. You just, it's yeah. You know, so just and, hit that button. And one of the reasons I played the shit out of this game, I mean, I'm sure I would have if I played it on Wii U as well. But especially since it was like the only game I had on Switch. For, yeah, like over a month I think before I bought my first. Well, besides Snipper Clips, you know, I didn't have any other Switch games. Sure. And it may, so and if had, I wanted to play yeah. Switch, I had to play Zelda. Yeah. Well, and having it having it portable makes it a lot more accessible. It's just a lot easier. You just hit a button and it's on. You know, you don't got to turn. I did play it. some portable. I did. Yeah. Sure. You, well, you don't have to turn the TV on or like you know switch the system on. You just hit a button and boom, you're ready to go. So. Or you can say, "Hey, I want to go to bed now, but I want to keep playing Zelda," and then you just take yeah. it to bed with you. Yeah, that's what I would try to do. But then I but then it would be too far and the controller wouldn't work. <laughs> Wah, wah, wah. Yeah, wah, wah, wah. but uh, yeah, we've I mean we've talked for like almost an hour about Zelda here, so I think we're I think we're probably good. Unless there's anything else that you want to get into that we didn't talk about, I don't know. This is our first spoiler cast that we've ever done, so and I don't even really think like we really spoiled that much. Um, we just talked about ta- Ganon and the end, I guess. There's not really a whole lot to spoil, I guess, from this. No. You know, aside from saying, I mean, I think we already have spoiled most of it in previous episodes. I mean, all you can really spoil is what? Saying there's only like four dungeons, saying that, that there's two parts of Ganon. Are, yeah. All your friends die from the previous, like, yeah. besides Zelda. Yeah. <laughs> That's a big spoiler. So when you go to the Divine Beast, you're not rescuing anybody. They're already dead. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they're already dead in the Beast. I didn't think they were alive. <laughs> I mean, it's been like a hundred years since they got captured. But I don't know. I mean, well, Zelda's still alive, though. She made it out. She did. So at least you had that. That's kind of spoiler. At least she is not dead. So the best ending you can get in this is actually, like, yeah, the closest you would expect it to being a reset to where they're just hanging out in Hyrule and going around and tie up loose ends, and then that's the end. So Yeah. Who knows? Maybe, yeah, maybe the Trial of the Guardians or whatever it's called. Maybe that'll be the... Uh, Champion's Ballad. Yeah, Champion's Ballad. Maybe that'll be the post-game that... We all want. That's what I'm thinking. Like when I found out that they that it was that you couldn't play it unless you had beaten the game. That right there makes me think that it's a post game thing. So it's unfortunate that it has to be through DLC, but you know that's the world we live in nowadays. Maybe they'll release like a Zelda Ultimate Edition later for Switch Two, and it'll have that in there already, (laughs) and then some more post game stuff or extra dungeons. You know, something like that. But yeah, it's a, it, yeah, it's a, it was a game that took a long, long time to beat. I'm glad I finally got through it though. But now, it's still kind of sad. Yeah. But next, next in the target is, uh, Xenoblade. <laughs> oh, Xenoblade yeah. X. I gotta, we gotta, we gotta have a spoiler cast for that eventually. Hopefully before the new one comes out. I'm gonna beat that game at some point. I'm on, I'm on a, I'm on a game beating frenzy here. I'm gonna do Dragon sure Quest. Sure sounds like it. I'm gonna do Dragon Quest V be my next one and then it's either i I mean i'm afraid to go back to xenoblade because it was so hard (laughs) where i stopped but i still have a tokyo so it'll either be xenoblade or tokyo but i'm gonna i'm gonna try to get close i think i'm pretty close in tokyo mirage sessions actually to beating that but and whenever i get both of those then maybe i'll go back to paper mario again (laughs) probably not though anyway this has been our spoiler cast I guess I could have done it. I should have done our plugs earlier in case people didn't listen all the way to the end. But we've been your hosts. I'm Trey Johnson. I'm Jeremy Mikowski. And you can find our podcast at NintendoMadePodcast.com. You can find us on iTunes or anywhere else that you can download podcasts from. You can find it on there. We have a YouTube channel that you should check out called 
Nintendo Made Podcast on YouTube, YouTube slash Nintendo Made Podcast. Um, I have a Twitter, Nintendo underscore domain. I post pictures of games on there sometimes and try to make good jokes. So, you know, comment on them. And, and if you want to follow, like, when the game, when these podcasts are released, you'll find them on there. So, and anyway, this has been our episode 81. This has been our Zelda spoiler cast plus news and whatnot. And, uh, you know, thanks for listening. We'll talk to you next week. See ya. See ya.